Operation with signed numbers. Integer is the name of positive and negative whole numbers. If we were looking at integers on a number line, we would have the number 0 in the center and the positive numbers to the right. Positive numbers will not have a sign attached to them. So if you see a number and there's no sign, it's positive. Negative numbers are to the left of 0 on a number line, and you will see the negative sign to represent that it's a negative number. So negative numbers will have a negative sign. Positive numbers will not have a sign. Key note is that these are my integers, and 0 is neither positive nor negative. So 0 is not positive or negative. Positive numbers will not have a sign. Negative numbers will have a negative sign or a minus sign. A definition, a double negative, when you have a double negative, it turns the value to positive. So if I had a negative on the outside of parentheses with a negative number, I have a double negative, and that means that I really have a positive number 7, or a plus if it's mixed into an algebraic problem. The absolute value is the size of a number with or without the negative sign. So if you see this symbol with bars, not parentheses, bars, this is the absolute value. And the absolute value is explaining or giving us the value of the distance for a number. And therefore, when we get the absolute value of any number, it will always be a positive value because when we talk about distance, distance is always positive. So if I have the absolute value of a negative 7, well, when I evaluate the absolute value, it comes out as a positive. Same with the absolute value of a positive 7. When I evaluate the absolute value, it's a positive 7. So now we're going to talk about adding rules. And the first adding rule is same signs. So if you are adding integers and they have the same signs, you're going to add the numbers and you're going to keep the sign. So with positive, positive, we're familiar with that. 2 plus 2 is 4. We've seen that before. It's when we have a negative number minus a number. That really means that I have the same sign and the sign's negative, so I'm going to add the two numbers together and we're going to end up with a negative answer. So this is an example that we've seen many of times, 5 plus 4. They're both positive. I know 5 is positive because there's no sign in front of it. So it's same sign, so I'm going to add, and I'm going to keep the sign. And because the sign is positive, I end up with just a 9. So this next one is where you have the same sign, and it's minus. It's a negative 7 minus 4. Well, minus and negative mean the same thing. So in this case, they're the same sign. That means I have to add the two numbers together, the 7 and the 4, and keep the sign, that negative sign. So you don't want to rewrite the problem every time and put addition sign. You want to be able to know this rule, that if it's the same sign, you're going to add and keep the sign, and we're going to end up with the negative 11. So now notice here I have 8 minus a negative 5. Be really careful when you have two signs. When you have two signs, you have to clear the two signs first. And this is the double negative. And a double negative changes to a plus. So I end up getting 8 plus 5 here. And when I do the arithmetic, I get a positive 13 as my answer. When we talk about adding rules and their different signs, if the sign in front of the numbers are different, difference means subtraction, so you're going to subtract the numbers and use the sign of the bigger number. So if the bigger number is positive, 4 minus 2 is 2, well, it's going to be a positive number. It's when the bigger number is negative. So if I do 2 minus 4, the bigger number is 4, I'm going to end up with a negative value. So here's an example here. I have a negative 9 plus 4. Well, you can't take 9 away from 4, so you're always going to have to do the subtraction always from the 
larger number. So 9 minus 4 will give me 5. And then you need to make a decision about which number is the higher number. And the 9 is higher, so, and it has a negative sign, so my answer is going to be negative. So notice in this case I have a double negative. So you might think that we have same sign here. But you always have to get rid of the double signs first before you do the arithmetic. So in this case, that double negative is going to change to a plus. And now you see different signs. And when you have different signs, that means you have to subtract. And you always have to subtract the smaller from the larger. And then you're going to keep the sign of the higher number. And in this case, the higher number is negative. So my solution will be a negative 3. So notice here we have a multi-step problem of arithmetic. The first thing you always want to do is rewrite the problem without the double signs. So when you see this plus minus, the plus minus changes to a minus. So you end up with 7 minus 12. And then I'm bringing down the minus 3, and then that double negative will change to a positive 8. So the first thing you want to do is rewrite the problem without the double signs. Now that the double signs are out of the way, I can do the arithmetic from left to right. So from left to right, I see 7 minus 12. They're different signs. I'm going to subtract and keep the sign of the higher number, so I end up with a negative 5. And then I'm just bringing down the minus 3 plus 8. Then I'm doing the negative 5 minus 3. That's the same sign, so I'm going to add and keep the sign. And I'm just bringing down the plus 8. And now I have a negative 8 plus 8, and that will be 0. Pause and try. So in this case, you want to get rid of the double signs. So I end up with a negative 23 plus 17 minus 9. Working from left to right, negative 23 plus 17 is a negative 6 minus 9. Same sign, I'm going to add and keep the sign. So you should have gotten a negative 15. Now we're going to work with the multiplication rules for integers and any real number. And when you multiply two negatives together, it will equal positive. So we multiply two negatives together, it equals a positive. We multiply two positive numbers, it equals a positive. But when you're multiplying different signs, a negative to a positive or a positive to a negative, it will equal a negative answer. So same signs, a negative times a negative is a positive, positive times a positive is a positive. But if they're different signs, negative times a positive or a positive times a negative, you'll get a negative answer. So here's an example here. And notice here, we don't see a multiplication symbol. A lot of times in algebra, we won't see multiplication symbols, but we'll see a number attached to it. A parentheses. And when a number is attached, that means we're multiplying. So we end up multiplying here a negative times a negative, and we're going to get a positive 6. This next example, you see we have a positive times a positive. So when we multiply here, we get a positive 6. And this last example, we have a negative times a positive, and a negative times a positive will give us a negative answer. So we end up with a negative 6. So division rules work the same way for multiplication. If you divide by a negative, if you divide a negative by a negative, you get a positive answer. But notice here in algebra, we see division a lot of times with the bar. So division in this case won't be a division symbol, but you'll see a number over a number. And if you have a negative number over a negative number, that means I'm dividing. And in this case, I'm dividing a negative 2 into a negative 6. We're going to end up with a positive 3 as our answer. So this is what division looks like in algebra. If you have a positive divided by a positive, we're going to end up with a positive answer. So if we have positive 6 divided by a positive 2, we get a positive 3 as our answer. So when it's a negative divided by a positive or a positive divided by a negative, you end up with the negative answer. So if I have a positive number on top and it's being divided by a negative number, we're going to get a negative number. So positive 6 divided by negative 2 is equal to a negative 3. 
If you have the negative on top divided by a positive, you're going to get a negative answer. So instead, if I had a negative 6 being divided by a positive 2, it will equal a negative 3. So again, some examples here of division. You're going to see division with that bar. And I have a negative 32 being divided by a negative 4. Negative divided by negative is going to give me a positive 8. This next example, we have a positive 25 divided by a negative 5. A positive divided by a negative will give us a negative 5 as our answer. And then this last one, you have to notice that the negative is neither with the 3 or the 18. But it's only one negative. Therefore, when I do the division, I'm going to be left with the negative. So I do the 18 divided by 3, and I get a negative 6. This next keynote with division is if you have a division problem where you're dividing a number into zero, and in this case I'm labeling that number to be some number b. If I divide b into zero, I get zero. Because again, division is the opposite of multiplication, so what I get should be when I multiply together, be what I divide it into. So if I take b and multiply it to 0, I will get 0. So b times 0 equals 0. But when you have 0 divided into some number, 0 does not divide into any number. 0 times something will never give me another number other than 0. Therefore, it's undefined. So you can't divide 0 into any number. You can divide a number into 0 and get 0, but you can't divide 0 into any number. So when you have 0 in the denominator or 0 in the bottom or you're dividing by 0, it is undefined. So the rule is you can never divide by 0. So in this case, I have a negative 0 divided by 4. Again, the negative sign doesn't matter. I'm dividing, zero, uh, dividing into 0, therefore my answer is 0. I have 0, and it's being divided into a negative 12. It's undefined, because you can't divide 0 into any number. So this next thing that we're going to do is with prime numbers. So when we're talking about prime numbers, you need to know a number is prime if, and only if, it has a factor of 1 and itself. So the two factors and 1 and itself. So when we talk about prime numbers, some examples, if I were to do it in numerical order, would be 2, 3, 5, 7, 13, and so on. And again, 2 is only divisible by 1 and itself. 3 is only divisible by 1 and itself. Notice that 4 is not included. 4 is divisible by 1 in itself, but it's also divisible by 2. So the only even prime number that you'll have is 2. Every other even number after that will not be prime, because 2 can divide into it. So we're going to be using prime numbers to find our least common multiple. And what the least common multiple is, it's the smallest common multiple of a set of two or more numbers. So when you're asked to find the least common multiple of two or more numbers, we're going to be using something called the ladder method. And the ladder method uses prime factoring. So how the ladder method works is you're going to write the two numbers in a row. So we have 24 and 36, and I want to find the least common multiple. So I'm going to write the two numbers in a row, and then I'm going to draw an L shape around it. So now what I want to do is I'm going to divide out common prime numbers, and I'm always starting with the smallest prime number. So I'm looking at 24 and 36, and I want to divide out the common prime number they have or prime factor they have in common. And because they're even, it's going to be 2. So I'm going to start with 2, and I'm going to divide it into 24 and 36. And whatever's left will go underneath the number. So when I divide 24 by 2, I get 12. 
When I divide 36 by 2, I get 18. And again, I'm going to repeat this process until they no longer have common factors. So again, they're both even. I'm going to divide 2 into both the numbers. Whatever is left is going to go underneath. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. 18 divided by 2 is 9. And now 2 doesn't go into these numbers. But the next prime factor, 3, will. So now I'm going to use 3, and I'm going to divide it into both numbers, and whatever is left is going to go underneath. So I divided 3 into 6, and I got 2. 3 into 9, and I got 3. Now there's no more common factors. So now I can find my least common multiple by multiplying the L shape on the outside of numbers. So notice that all the numbers on the outside create that L, the least common multiple, and I multiply all these numbers together and that will give me my least common multiple, which in this case would be 72 for 24 and 36. Now I like to multiply the side numbers first because it's easier. They're smaller numbers. 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. I multiply the bottom numbers together. 2 times 3 is 6. And then I take those two numbers and multiply them together and I get my least common multiple. So I'm just trying to show you another quick method of how to do this multiplication so you're not doing each one of them individually. Pause and try. So the first thing you're going to do here is you're going to write it in a line and then you're going to draw your L shape around it. You're going to divide out prime factors and in this case the smallest prime factor is 3. And then I'm going to also have 3 again and then they have no more factors in common. So I'm going to multiply the side numbers, the bottom numbers, and then I multiply those two numbers together and my least common multiple here would be 54.